Hi, I'm DJ Ware. Today on the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be installing a home media server on a Raspberry Pi. And so let's get started and um, we'll, we'll start by doing a search and what we're going to be looking for is MB. I know there's a number of uh, different media servers that you could install, but I find this one the easiest to set up and the easiest to maintain. Uh, so uh, that's the way I'm going to go. There's also, of course, Plex and Kodi and a number of other things that you can install as well. But we're going to do this one. MB is open source, and uh, the source code is published on GitHub. It does, uh, it, it does have a very nice website, and they do have a premium service. So if you're interested in subscribing to television shows or being able to download and stream movies uh, that you don't have in your library, you can do that through that uh, premiere service. But for today, we're just going to host our own library, and so we'll go to the download section. And the first thing you'll see is that you'll have a list of all the servers that MB runs on. And also, uh, these are all the clients that MB can be installed on in order to be able to connect back to your server and then display content. So there's a number of those as well. And then these are all the mobile apps for Android and all the usual cast of players, although this is kind of weird uh, since they no longer <laughs> support the Windows Phone. But uh, uh, I'm going to be going to uh, Linux to do this. And uh, you do have a number of options here to run uh, an operating, you, which operating system you want. You have Arch, you have CentOS, Debian, Fedora, Linux Mint, OpenSUSE, and Ubuntu. Uh, uh, Ubuntu and Debian are, of course, uh, very similar, and Raspbian, which is the Raspberry Pi, is based on Debian. So this one should work just fine. I could go to, to uh, Debian to do this, but uh, this will work just okay. So the next thing I want to do is go to my Raspberry Pi here, and I would warn you that before you do anything like this, a wget, uh, where you're pasting from a GitHub source, just make sure that you trust this content before you uh, download it. Now I've double checked this uh, several times and it is indeed the right file. It is the one that's supported by MB, but this is a good way to install malware on your uh, Linux device. So enough said about that. So this will take a few minutes to uh, download and um, it's about, oh, 51 meg or so, I think. And uh, not getting tremendous uh, wild uh, uh, download rates today and there's my file so we'll go ahead and do we'll go ahead and uh, download and then install it through uh, dpackage which will uh, unpack it and then uh, install any any dependencies that it needs which in this case will be ffmpeg uh, in order to do the uh, <coughs> transcoding now mb does support uh, inline transcoding, uh, so it will do that. And I see we're all done here, so let's just make sure that it is running. And it is. The default port for MB is 8096, and so we can, we can go ahead, open up a new window, and we'll go to node 5. And the first thing that happens is it greets you with a welcome page, and then it asks you to start setting this up through the wizard. And we'll use the wizard. It's, it's not that difficult to use this. Uh, the next thing is to create the first user. I, I'm not going to use MB. I don't need that. Uh, I don't, if I had a, a, limb, uh, a, a MB uh, Connect account, which is for the premium service, I would put in my information here and then my local server would know about my premium uh, subscription. But I don't have one and so we don't need that. I also don't need that either. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and add the media library that we set up. And the first thing to do is to choose the content types. And you have movies and music, TV shows, books, games, and all these things here, as well as mixed content. Since we're just going to do movies for today, uh, we'll just pick that. And then the next thing is to define the path where your uh, videos are stored, and mine are right here. I don't need any other information there. My preferred language for downloading is English. 
and we'll have it go to the movie DB and check and see if there's any metadata for that movie that it can display as well as if it exists it'll enable the the uh, thumbnail if not it'll just take a random frame out of the video and display it on the screen for you so that's all we need there and we'll go next and we have our default options here i do not want remote connections to the mb server uh i do i don't need them for what for today <laughs> So we're just going to leave that off. And so this will only be accessible uh, locally. So then it reminds you that uh, you need to go check out some of the apps if you want to display these. Now you can watch movies, obviously, within the browser. Well, so we're all done. And uh, we can go ahead and sign in. And then it should take me to the dashboard. Again, I don't need that. And then it shows where the address is for that uh, Raspberry Pi. And let's see, got everything done. My media server is set up and it's already discovered some movies and it's displaying those. So uh, I think we're ready to go. One other thing I would like to mention though before we jump out of here is a lot of times when you're using uh, cell phones and so forth, it's, a, it's really difficult to enter all the uh, alphanumeric stuff, so you can set a pin optionally if you want to do that uh, and then enable that pin so that you can just use that to sign in as a short form. I'm not going to set that up, but if that's something of interest to you, you can do that uh, and, and uh, uh, just be cautious of the security risks as well. So I've got a number of public domain live uh, movies here. All these have not been renewed, uh, so they're copyrights have have expired and uh, have fallen into the public domain so the, the mb server uh, defaults to h264 and mp4 as the video type if you have something uh, a different uh, video codec or a different audio codec uh, mb will transcode on the fly for your device so then it gives me some uh, uh, metadata here about the movie uh, tells me uh, that this is a, a an AAC codec and MP4A. Uh, it also gives me some information about the cast, <laughs> and uh, and it allows me to go ahead and start to play it. So it it, it has already transcoded it. So let's let's let that play. I'm going to turn this down. So I don't have to talk over it. And then we'll go back here and we'll just see how it's running. You know, just give it a minute because HTOP does hit the server a minute. And you can see, use it about 161 meg of memory and not really significant load <laughs> on the system. <laughs> uh, about a, a 0.48 average load. That's not much at all. 2.8% on one processor. So, not a big deal. So it's not really taking up a lot of uh, a lot of bandwidth. This is a Raspberry Pi 3, not a Raspberry Pi 4. I don't have mine yet, so I can't I can't do anything with that. So let's go ahead and stop, and we'll go back uh, to this list. You can also set a playlist if you want to watch a number of movies, uh, and you, and that's certainly something that you can do. So that's all I had for today. I hope you uh, enjoyed today's short video on setting up a home media server. It's not very hard to do, and uh, you can have it done in a few minutes. Uh, I have have installed this, of course, on an x86 as well. It works just fine there on Linux. You can also install it on a uh, on a Odroid, and it works fine there as well. So, if you did like this video today, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you again real soon. And bye for now.